Today, you're going to learn what aggregate functions are, see some examples, learn a few tips for using them, and see how to resolve some common errors. Aggregate functions in SQL are basic, but they are very powerful. In case you haven't heard of them, they are functions that allow you to analyze multiple rows and return a single value. There are five aggregate functions in SQL. They work the same in most SQL vendors. And just like Thanos, we'll see all of them in this video, as well as a way to use them all together. I'll also show you a few things to watch out for and how to solve them. Let's say we have a table of orders in our database. We can run a select query to see the columns like this and see the results here. This is what our table looks like. Let's say we want to see the number of records in this table. We can use a function called count. We write select, then count. It's a function, so we add brackets. What goes inside the brackets? For most functions, we add some values or a column. We can do that for count, but most of the time you'll be using count to count the number of rows in the table. And the most common way to do that is to use the asterisk or star character. This is referred to as count star. This means the entire row will be counted. We then add from and the table name. Let's run this query. We can see our results here. We see a single row which shows the number of rows in the table. So that's the first infinity stone, I mean the first SQL aggregate function. What about this column header here? It shows the name of count. But in some databases, you'll get a name of count star, like we see here in MySQL. Or you'll get something else. How can you give it a better or more readable name? You can use a feature in SQL called a column alias. Essentially, you put the word as after the column in the select clause, then a name that you'd like to give to the column in the results. This makes it easier to see what the value is, and easier for any application or tool that is running the query. We can run this query and see the results. The value is the same, but the header has been updated. So that's something to keep in mind when working with functions. The second aggregate function is called sum. It allows you to add up a series of number values. For this example, we'll calculate the sum of the price column from the order line table. We can do this by writing select, then sum, and inside the brackets we add the price column. We'll give it an alias of total price so we can better describe what it is. Then we say from order line. Let's run the query. We see the results here. This number here, 103558, is the total of all price values for orders, and in this database it's the total revenue made for book orders. If you want to get a quick reference guide for these aggregate functions and many other SQL features in several different SQL vendors, you'll love the SQL cheat sheets I've created. You can get them for free using the link in the description. Here is the max function, the third of the five aggregate functions. This function will show the latest date if you provide a date value, or the highest number value, or the last text value if the text values were sorted alphabetically. Let's see an example. We'll use max to find the latest order date in a customer order table. We can run this query and see our results here. It shows a single row of 20 October 2023. Now you can actually have more than one aggregate function in a query. Let's say we wanted to see the maximum order date and the maximum order ID in the table. We can add a second max function to the select clause and use the other column. We can see our results here. It shows two columns, one with the max order date and one with the max order ID. They don't necessarily come from the same row. The values are calculated independently. You'll also notice that they both have a column heading of max here. We didn't add aliases and Postgres or dBeaver has used the word max for both of them. Let's fix that. We can add two aliases and then run the query. The results are the same, but the column headings are a little better. The fourth aggregate function is called min. It's the opposite of max and it shows the minimum values. Let's find the earliest order date. We can do this using min on the order date column. The earliest order date is 20 October 2020. It's very similar to the max function as we can see. The last aggregate function is called AVG, which is short for average. It will find the average value from the column you provide it. Let's say we want to find the average price of an order line. We can do this by writing select then average and adding the price column inside brackets. Then we add from and order line. We can run this and see the results. It shows a value of 6.72, which is the average of the price column in this table. 
Now some databases will show a whole number here and others will show decimals. So just be aware of that when you run it. You can round a decimal value to a whole number or to fewer decimal places by using the round function. Let's go back and see some of the records in the cust order table. We learned how to see the total number of rows in a table. What if we wanted to see the total number of rows for each customer or for each date or some other set of data? This is called grouping in SQL and we can do that with our query. Let's say we want to see the total number of orders for each customer ID. We can start by writing select customer ID, then we write count star, so the second column is the count of records. Then we add from, then cust order. Let's run this query. We get an error here. It says, error column cust order dot customer ID must appear in the group by clause or be used in an aggregate function. If you're using a different database, you'll get a different error message, but it essentially means the same thing. This error happens because we are attempting to view information for a single record, which is customer ID, as well as an aggregate value, which is count. We can do this in SQL, but only if we use the group by clause. This keyword will let us specify different groups of data. It allows us to use an aggregate function to calculate the result for different values in a different column. In our example, we will be able to see the count of orders for each customer. So we add group by, then we add the customer ID column. Here is the thing to remember. Any column in the select clause that is not in an aggregate function must go in the group by clause. We've done that now. Let's run the query. We can run this query and see the results here. We see the customer ID values and then the count of orders for each customer. That's what we wanted. This query looks at all of the data in the table. What if we only wanted to look at some of the data? Let's say we only wanted to see customers and their order counts for orders placed in 2023 or later. We can add this condition to our query by adding a WHERE clause. We are able to do this even though we have a GROUP BY clause or an aggregate function. Add the WHERE clause after the FROM clause but before the GROUP BY clause. The date format you enter here will depend on which vendor you're using. Sometimes you'll need to add some dashes, other times you'll need to use different formats. Let's run this query. We can see the results here. It still shows customers and account, but it should only be counting rows where the order date is after the 1st of Jan 2023. What if we only want to see customers that have more than one order? In other words, where this count value is greater than one. We can add another condition to our WHERE clause for this. We specify count is greater than one, which should mean only rows with a value of two or more are shown. Let's run this query. We can do this, but we see an error. It says aggregate functions are not allowed in WHERE. Just like the other error we saw, you'll get a different message in other databases, but the meaning is the same. This error happens because we can't use aggregate functions in a WHERE clause. This is because the GROUP BY clause is performed after the WHERE clause is performed, and the database can't go back and add another WHERE condition after the GROUP BY is done. To resolve this, we can use the HAVING clause to filter our results on the columns in a GROUP BY. It seems strange, I know, but that's just how it is in SQL. So we can remove this condition from the WHERE clause, add HAVING after the GROUP BY, and add this condition back in. Let's run this query. We can see our results here. It's worked. We can only see customers with more than one order. Some have two, some have three, and some have even more. Aggregate functions can be pretty powerful, especially once we combine them with GROUP BY and HAVING clauses. If you want to see another powerful way to use functions in SQL and maybe get your mind blown as much as a post credit scene in a Marvel movie, check out this video here on window functions. Thanks for watching.